So, welcome to this webinar on digitalization, a challenge and an opportunity for banking institutions. Um, maybe before we get started, I'll tell you a few words about myself. So, my name is Jérôme Kerli. I am Head of Research and Development at NetGuardians. You can reach me on Twitter on at John Kerli. Um, I have 15 years of experience in you know, designing and implementing uh, real-time trading systems, financial computing systems, big data analytics platforms, and so on, in financial institutions. I have joined the Guardians two years ago as head of R&D, and I'm very happy today to present you what I believe are you know, the incredible opportunities and also the challenges offered by the digitalization to banking institutions. So let's get started. So what I'll be presenting you today is first, what is the digitalization? How is it um, defined? What happens today under the term digitalization? I will want to show you a few examples illustrating how financial services are impacted by digitalization. Then I want to give you uh, three formal definitions of what is the digitalization. And then we'll get to the real thing. At the end of the day, what are the challenges and opportunities for banking institutions? And I would be happy to finish by telling you a few words in regards to how I believe that Guardians can help financial institutions uh, respect the challenges given by digitalization and succeed in adopting the opportunities there. So let's get started. So what is the digitalization in a way? Our society is evolving. Yesterday, in 2008, we were amazed by the first smartphones, you know, but today they have almost become a part of ourselves. We simply cannot go anywhere without them anymore. So our smartphones, the biggest invention of the decade, yeah, that's likely, but not the previous decade, not the current one. I'll get back to that. Today, Everybody has in his pocket a computer that is more powerful by several order of magnitudes than the computer, for instance, that you know, has been used uh, 50 years ago to send people to the moon. Later, 30 years ago, we had computers still way less powerful than an iPhone today that were fitting an entire room. And today, an iPhone stands in our pocket. Nowadays, technologies emerge first in the consumer market and then spread into business. New solutions emerge every month and corporations cannot keep up the pace. This new reality has a name, it's the consumerization. And the consumerization has a consequence. Increasingly, the trend is to hire employees with their device and applications. This is the BYOD for bring your own device trend. It comes from the fact that employees are increasingly more comfortable and more efficient with their own devices. The direct consequence of the consumerization is the use of mix of professional and personal tools by employees. Think Office Suite, Gmail, Google+, Twitter, Facebook, Dropbox, Evernote. Nowadays, many companies are still blocking access to these personal tools from their employees. Mostly financial institutions, I have to say. But tomorrow, that won't be possible anymore. People are used to be connected all the time with highly efficient devices on highly responsive services everywhere and for every possible need. Some facts. Global sales of PC never really exploded, but on the other hand, global sales of mass or smartphones and tablet explodes. Global mobile traffic went from 1% in 2009 to 4% in 2010 and 12% in 2012. Today it reaches 40%. In 2020, global mobile traffic will exceed fixed species internet traffic. Take the situation of India, for instance. The wire of telecommunication infrastructure there could never be developed as it has, it, as it has been uh, in Europe or in the United States, for instance. There, in India, for instance, the mobile traffic already exceeded the desktop traffic in 2012. In 2017, over 3 billion people are connected all the time, everywhere, and for every possible need. Global sales of smartphones and tablets has exploded. More facts. 
we look at our smartphones in average 150 times a day. We are using our smartphones all the time, even when watching another media. Even when watching TV, we cannot refrain from using a connected device at the same time, either our smartphone or our tablet. As a funny note, men and women are using the smartphones or tablets at this time for significantly similar reasons. There are two exceptions. Looking at sports results on an iPad while watching TV seems to be rather a man thing, while looking at Facebook feeds while watching TV seems to be rather a women thing. I cannot stress enough how much this is important and what it means in terms of change of society. Today, we are interconnected on different kinds of media during a continuous time and for every possible need. This has become a whole part of the human behavior. In a few years, okay, maybe a little more, the majority of the workforce will be composed by millennials, by people almost born with an iPhone. But this is today. Tomorrow, there will be dozens of billions of additional resources in the form of smart devices connected on internet and exchanging data. The Internet of Things, or IoT, refers to uniquely identifiable objects and their interconnection on the internet, as well as their automatic exchange of information with third-party services. Dr. Henrik Christensen, professor of computer science uh, of the chair of robotics at the Georgia Institute of Technology said, not long ago, my current prediction is that kids born today will never have to drive a car. There are 3 billion people connected in 2017 and exchanging data on the internet. Gartner thinks that there will be 26 billion of devices on the Internet of Things by 2020. ABI Research is even more optimistic and claims that 30 billion devices will be wirelessly connected to the Internet of Things by 2020. The Internet of Things is the coming big thing. The Internet of People and the Internet of Things together form the Internet of Everything. Cisco defines the Internet of Everything as follows. The Internet of Everything brings together people, process, data and things to make network connections more relevant and valuable than ever before, turning information into actions that creates new capabilities, richer experiences and unprecedented economy. The Internet of Everything is the coming evolution from the interconnection of people and objects, always, all the time, everywhere, and for every possible need. <coughs> Since we started estimating and measuring the amount of produced data in, until 2003, 5 exabytes of data, so 5 billion gigabytes, have been produced. In 2011, that quantity was generated in two days. Think of Facebook, Twitter, Google search logs, financial transaction logs, etc. In 2014, this quantity was generated in 10 minutes. Today, it is likely generated in a few minutes only. Not only do we generate more and more data, but today we have the means and the technology to analyze, exploit and mine this data to extract meaningful business insights. The, the data generated by the company's own systems, such as logs, user and customer activity trades, etc., can be a very interesting source of information regarding customer behavior, profiles, trends, desires, etc. But big data, since this is the topic here, becomes really relevant only when one also considers the data external to the corporation, such as Facebook status feeds, Twitter logs, LinkedIn news, etc. Today, a whole lot of additional sources are available to corporations to gather business insights related to market trends. To summarize, what we are experiencing today, the digitalization of the masses, the era of power, the availability of massive amount of data, more importantly, the ability to analyze and use this data, the always and everywhere interconnection of people, the internet of things, the coming internet of everything must lead corporation to rethink their business model and the way they work. And the moment is now. 
Cooperation must understand what this means and how this change of behavior of humanity as a whole will require to adapt their business models to the digital era. Now, of course, when I run these speeches in financial institutions, it happens sometimes that I hear comments such as, yeah, well, all of these makes surely a lot of sense for fancy internet companies. But look, we're a banking institution here. We're doing serious business here. We're not Facebook. I'm always puzzled by this kind of reaction because, in my opinion, serious businesses such as banking institutions are in contrary on the front line when it comes to meeting the digitalization challenges. It's no wonder fintechs have become such a thing and are increasingly eating the banking business. Think of millennials, think of these people that are almost born with a, with a tablet or a smartphone in their hands. <coughs> For instance, my father used to go to the banking institution that was closest from where he lived and where he worked. That's how he made his choice. I myself, on the other hand, I have chosen my banking institution at the time I was a student. My choice was driven more or less by the conditions that banks were giving to students, you know, such as free credit card, no additional goals, etc. Then I simply remain loyal to my first choice. Millennials' choice will be different. They will choose the bank that provides them with the best online experience. That will be their main driver. For these people born with Twitter, Facebook and all these fancy online services, it will simply seem impossible to have to you know, physically go to a branch to perform whatever operation they will need related to their banking account, including its initial opening. So let me give you some examples. Wells Fargo announced plans earlier this year to close over 400 branches in the US. The tendency of big financial institutions is to close physical branches at an unprecedented pace as a reflection of people's preferences for online and mobile banking. In online banking itself, there is also a clear tendency from 2012 onwards. Mobile banking usage skyworks while fixed internet banking is stagnating or even slightly shrinking. On one hand, rising compliance costs and restrictive regulations is the new normal. This forces banks to increase operational efficiency at all costs, which is pretty difficult at the end of the day when regulation costs tend to explode. On the other hand, reduced margin and increasing cost is forcing banking institutions to adapt. Growing the investment and management business line is a relevant approach, of course, but diversifying earnings with new retail banking initiatives aimed at ensuring at first place on the online banking market is mandatory. The digitalization is shaking the fundamentals of business banking. Just as technology has disrupted the transportation business with Uber, the lodging business with Airbnb, the consumer lending business with so many peer-to-peer -peer lending platforms available, technology is about to disrupt investment banking. This is happening. Alternative financing models are progressing throughout the business lines. Peer-to-peer -peer consumer lending, crowdfunding, peer-to-peer -peer business lending. All of them are exploding over the past years. This chart shows the situation in the UK, but the worldwide situation is pretty similar. The important information here is that volume of peer-to-peer -peer and crowdfinancing is doubling every year since 2012. This is the landscape of alternative financing firms and startups. You know, more companies are appearing there every month, almost every week. And this is only alternative financing landscape. If you look at the global fintech landscape, you can multiply the count of, of companies here by 20. Fintechs are eating the banking business. Banking institutions need to adapt, or eventually a lot of them will disappear.
The blockchain. Back in 2010, nobody ever heard that word. Only very you know, high-tech or finance specialists were aware of any cryptocurrency. Today, everybody knows Bitcoin and most people heard about blockchain. While the blockchain technology is not ready yet to completely replace the trust of party, it has the potential to disrupt the very root of the worldwide financial systems. Happily here, financial institutions have understood this from the very beginning, and a lot of blockchain initiatives nowadays are led by big financial corporations. I focused a lot, by the way, on how the digitalization is challenging the banking business. But the blockchain technology is interesting since it's a good example that there are opportunities as well. Another interesting example, Royal Bank of Scotland engaged IBM Watson to take care of the simplest customer request coming from an online channel as a way to enhance operational efficiency. So I myself not necessarily a big fan of IBM or Watson, but this is a pretty sound use case for Watson at the end of the day. And in any case, it's a brilliant example of how technology can help banking institutions increase operational efficiency. This is another interesting thing. A team in the University of California has designed a model aimed at predicting stock prices evolution by using statistic of treats, sentiment analysis and relationship discovery algorithms. Not only they are able to predict stock prices evolution one day in advance, but they came up with a model much more accurate than pretty much every other initiative so far. Technology, here are big data, also offers unprecedented opportunities for financial institutions. Again, both the evolution of means and the evolution of behavior induced by the new technologies such as the digitalization of the masses, the big data technologies, the internet of everything have strong consequences on corporations and the society in general. The digitalization shakes the fundamentals of our society, shocks our references and revolutionizes our business models. Corporations need to adapt. Um, so I hope that you have now a good understanding of what I mean with the term digitalization. So I think it's a good time to give a few formal definitions. A first definition that I think is pretty good comes from simply business dictionary. They say, the digitalization is the integration of digital technologies into everyday life by the digitization of everything that can be digitized. So maybe a first parenthesis here. here. English is not the mother tongue, and I'm not very clear with what is the difference between digitization and digitization and digitized and digitalized. So I'm using digitalized, that's the way it is. But this is really what's happening. Everything that can be digitalized either is digitalized or is getting digitalized. I realized recently that I myself, I haven't written anything down on paper for a pretty long time. You know, I use the internet to do my payments, book my holidays or business trips, search for a phone number. I take notes on my laptop or my smartphone. I even take my medical appointments using email. The digitalization is the increasing integration of digital technologies into everyday life. Corporations need to adapt their business models and operating model to follow this trend. They need to transform their business and make it suited to the digital era. Another definition. This is the definition of the digitalization from auto technology, and I think it's brilliant. The digitalization is the impact on corporations and organizations of the fact that people and things are always and everywhere interconnected for every possible need. I think it's brilliant, especially in the context of my webinar today, because what interests us today is the impact of the digitalization on corporations. And in this context, the definition from auto technology is crystal clear, accurate, and most relevant. Another way to put it would be, the digitalization is the impact on enterprises or on organization of the internet of everything. So one definition remains. What is the digital transformation? I could not find any easy way to present the notion of digital transformation as a one sentence. Instead, I find the following schematic most relevant in presenting, you know, what is the digital transformation. 
So let's imagine that T square here is a corporation. Inside the square, the blue form represents the organization of that corporation. Its organization, its processes, and its culture. The most recent technological evolutions, the always and everywhere interconnection of people, the Internet of Everything, big data technologies, the Web 3.0, social networks, blockchain, the new human machine interfaces we're having, etc., influence the society and causes an evolution both of means and behavior. It induces a change of means and behavior. In terms of means, think of the always and everywhere interconnection of people and things, the consumerization, the new businesses such as crowdfunding and crowdsourcing, the availability of massive amount of data, and more importantly again, the ability to analyze it, etc. In terms of behavior, think of the increasing digital literacy of people, the digital natives, the millennials, all the behavior changes brought by social network and the increasingly connected world in which we're living. Think of the real-time communication means. Think of the fact that people increasingly want everything now and tailor-made. This evolution of our society as a whole forces the corporation to transform its operating model, adapt its organization and its culture. This is the fourth industrial revolution. Corporations need to adapt three most essential aspects. They need to transform three essential aspects. First, the internal organization of corporations need to be adapted to match the responsiveness and dynamic required to design products in the digital era. Key practices here are agility and DevOps, of course, at every level in the company around the IT organization designing the digital products. Management and hierarchy should also be adapted to enable low response time to market events and customer feedback. Finally, every action and decision within the corporation should be taken with customer centricity in mind. Entering the digital era requires a significant evolution of the culture of the company. Lean startup principles and practices should be embraced and a tour of customer development process should accompany the product development processes already in place. Also, in the digital era, with reduced margin and increasing complexity of products and regulations, operational efficiency should be a constant focus. Finally, the marketing approach should evolve to meet the customer's expectations in a digital world. Customers expect corporations to meet them where they are, in a mostly online world. Corporations already started the digital marketing move many years ago, but that is not sufficient. In this ever more selfish world, people are looking for tailor-made. You know, it's all about me, myself and I. Corporations need to consider this and thank to a sound adoption of the Lean Startup principle such as multivariate tests. Corporations have the possibility to provide customers with very customized solutions. Even further, it is nowadays common to implicate customers in the design of the product itself and even in the process of searching for new products to develop. This is co-creation and co-innovation. And interestingly, just as technology is the driver behind the evolution forcing corporation to adapt, technology is also the solution to the transformation of corporations. Corporations need to understand that they have no choice. They need to digitalize significant portions of their business and understand the central place that technology has to take. Today, you know, there are still so many corporations that believe that IT and technology is a center of cost instead of the key vector for innovation. Those corporations will eventually disappear. Whatever the industry, IT and technology must be considered as a key investment and the most important vector of innovation, and not anymore as solely a center of cost. So, Alti's definition part has been pretty generic, so I would want now to focus a little more on the digital transformation of financial institutions. I would like to consider the digital transformation on two different perspectives. The first perspective concerns the challenges that the evolution of means and behavior from the digital era is causing to financial institutions. 
The second perspective is the opportunities that the digital era is offering to financial institutions. This is a financial institutions, and those are its challenges. On the competitiveness, in the digital era, comparison websites flourish and new advising websites or comparison services appear almost every month. The same evolution that impacted consumer goods will eventually apply to absolutely every business, including the banking business. Banking institutions need to adapt a fair price policy and emphasize clarity and simplicity when designing their products. Customer satisfaction. In a digital world, people want everything immediately. In addition, reputation is very important and can be hard in no time. For instance, people suffering from stolen credit card information will express themselves on social networks and can harm the reputation of an, institu an, of an institution that dealt badly with such a situation. Customer centricity. Today, more than ever, uh, embracing a thorough product development process, you know, uh, enhancing a thorough product development process with a customer development process, meeting the customer where he is and focusing on his needs and demands should be the core focus of financial institutions. Everything should be about answering the customer need. Marketing and branding, it's all about reputation and innovation. Design the best products, the most innovative ones. Implement striking online and mobile services. Communicate about them on the right channels and they will become viral. At the same time, an anecdotal fact discussed widely on the internet can cause a lot more damage to the company reputation than a bad balance sheet. Making a difference in the digital era is all about reputation and innovation. Operational efficiency. With shrinking margins and increased product development cost and increased regulatory, and, and increased regulatory pressure, of course, corporations need to rethink the way they work. Tracking and eliminating waste at all costs should be part of the key processes of the company. You know, not something to be done when there is time. Risk management and mitigation. In a digital world, the attack surface for cyber criminals or simply theft is much larger than it is in the traditional world. New channels, especially digital channels to access the banking institution products come with higher risk. While a sampling approach to control and audit could be sufficient before, it is not the case anymore with the digitalization. Banking institutions need to move their controls toward continuous, automated, comprehensive, and real-time control and audit approaches. State-of-the-art detection systems are not optional anymore. So those are the challenges caused by the digitalization. But the technology also comes with opportunities, and those are the opportunities for financial institutions. On the same dimensions, competitiveness. In, an, in a digital world, Technology can help putting in place platforms for co-creation and co-innovations, implicating the customers in both the identification of new products and their definition, which are ultimately you know, the very best way to handle innovation and the requirement for tailor-made solutions. Customer satisfaction. When processes and products are digitalized, achieving 24-7 availability is straightforward. A computer doesn't sleep. In addition, communication about fair price strategies is easier when the catalog of products is available online. Finally, even customer follower processes can be automated. Customer centricity. The digitalization requires financial institutions to meet the customer on his preferred channels, but it also provides them with the means to do so. Getting online and digital you know, from a purely technological perspective, is not difficult. On the other hand, changing the organization of the corporation to achieve the digitalization is the difficult part. Marketing and branding. It's all about innovation and reputation. Again, 
the digital world offers unprecedented opportunities to convince a customer to buy a product. Think of trial system, demo system, sandbox accounts. In addition, digital marketing is now a field on his own, on, on his on its own. Sorry, it is all about innovation and reputation. Operational efficiency. Technology is also key to achieve operational efficiency. New products or technologies aimed at moving to a paperless corporation and dematerializing processes appear every month. I'm tempted to say every week. Think of digital signature, responsible interfaces, etc. Case management and mitigation. Here as well. Most recent technologies such as big data analytics, machine learning and real-time processing systems offer unprecedented opportunities to move towards continuous, automated, comprehensive and real-time control and audit approaches. In addition, web technologies have significantly progressed over the past 10 years, making it possible to build responsive dashboards to monitor key performance indicators and more importantly, key risk indicators. Um, in a, not in a way that was impossible before. So, at the Guardians, what do we do to help financial institutions in this regard? So back to the topic, risk mitigation and management, both in terms of challenges and opportunities. I recovered here what I have presented in the previous slides. This is where we net Guardians kick in. This is the NG Screener platform. It's a state-of-the-art big data analytics platform that provides a continuous and comprehensive control framework for banking institutions. It covers a broad range of use cases going from user behavior analysis to predictive analytics through continuous audit processes. I'll describe the NG Screener platform with more details on the next slides. The NG Screener platform is in a unique position to help financial institutions in regards to addressing the risk mitigation challenges from the digitalization. In contrary to the usual BI approach, NG Screener works online in near real time. It is designed from the grounds up to leverage big data technologies for continuous and comprehensive control and audit processes. NG Screener comes out of the box with hundreds of controls and at detecting and even further preventing fraud patterns. In addition, NG Screener makes financial institutions enter the digital era with the risk management and mitigation processes. NG Screener provides out of the box comprehensive dashboards and data analytics applications. The underlying big data technologies leverage fraud detection algorithm to achieve fraud prevention. And it works in near real time addressing the usual drawbacks of business intelligence platforms, which you know, usually works uh, one day later. They suffer from the one day later problem. NG Screener, on the other hand, works in near real time in an online way connected on the banking information system. The NG Screener platform is composed by a lot of different components, but there are four core components. First, the DCF, or Data Collection Framework, which extracts and normalizes the various data we extract from the banking information system. The data we use from the banking information system is mostly business data, reference data, user activity trails, and customer activity trails. The second component is the NG Screener demo. This is the big data analytics engine itself, you know, which hands control and operates the continuous and comprehensive control and auditing processes. Controls themselves cover a broad range of use cases, such as producing compliance reports, searching for fraud patterns uh, in the activity trails, or profiling customers and users. The third component is the NG Screener UI, or user interface. It provides internal controls and compliance with a state-of-the-art dashboarding application, a data discovery application, and forensic investigations features. The last component is the NG Case Manager application. Interestingly, this is actually the application that internal users of banking institutions are the most aware of since it's the one they are confronted with. 
NC Case Manager is used to track alerts, reports, and violations. It packages a state-of-the-art workflow engine with enhanced notifications and integration capacities that tracks violation resolution, documentation, and closing. It supports, of course, advanced statistics and analytics features. Now, of course, NGS Cleaner can integrate with any GRC software the banking institution might already be using internally. With the digitalization, new opportunities for growth and innovation are emerging. New regulations and moreover changes in regulations to address these challenges will, in will increasingly appear at an unprecedented pace. Experience shows that the structural changes needed to bring costs down and improve effectiveness and risk can be accomplished much like digital transformation in other parts of the bank. The distinguishing context of the risk environment, however, has important applications. Risk practitioners in most regulatory jurisdictions have been under extreme pressure to meet evolving regulatory requirements and have had little time for much else. Also, chief risk officers have been wary of the test and learn approach characteristic of digital transformation, as the cost of errors in the risk environment can be unacceptably high. As a result, progress in, in digitalizing risk processes has been, you know, particularly slow. At the Guardians, we want you to be able to focus on identifying your risk needs and key controls, and we take care of digitalizing the related processes for you. At NetGuardians, we implement your risk and fraud detection controls efficiently and in the real time. Also, we keep you up to date with regulations. We want to digitalize your risk and control processes and make you move towards automated, integrated, comprehensive and continuous control and audit processes. We are in a position where we can leverage our big data analytics platform for all your risk use cases and showing you precisely how is the topic of our next webinar which will take place the 15th of March and which is called Compliance of the Future Control the Digitalization. I'm left with thanking you very much for attending this webinar. Uh, you can reach me on my email kerly at theguardians.ch or at Jerome Kerly on Twitter. You can also reach the Guardians on the following addresses. Um, I'm wishing you a good day. Thank you very much.